buy flowers, always show up on time. They always make calls, always on that FaceTime. Something about when they're holding me late at night. It feels good, but not right. Hey friends, welcome to Club Content Creator episode seven. Oh my goodness, here we are. My name is Mary Lou Mantle and my mission is to encourage and empower you to create digital content. On this show, I'm gonna talk about social media news. I'm gonna give you some tutorials and if you have any questions about being a content creator, I am more than happy to answer them here. I also am going to share all of the tools that I use in order to make this show. So don't worry, you're going to know all of that as well. And a big shout out to Thematic because we are streaming also to the Thematic YouTube page. And we got Stephanie, who is from Thematic, joining us in the chat. So hello, that song that you heard in the opening is from Thematic. It's from my weekly recommendations. That's been my favorite thing to just go in there and just pick one of those songs. It's so much easier to pick from 10 songs than to pick from like infinite songs. So thank you for that feature. So we've got some neat stuff to talk about today. And we're going to start with our social media news today, because there's two big things that have kind of come up in YouTube world and in Twitter world. But if you're watching, let me know where you're watching from. Let me know if you have any content creator questions. And uh, thank you so much for being here. So the first thing we're going to talk about is YouTube removing the dislike counts. So this doesn't mean that they're removing dislikes, which is what I thought actually. Uh, they're just removing the public counts, but you will be able to see these uh, counts still in your 
YouTube studio. So people can still click the thumbs down button, but it's not going to be public. So that's not fully everywhere yet. It's going to be rolling out, but keep an eye out for that. This is an article from Mashable. And the reason that they're taking this out is because there have been some studies that they've done and there's this thing like called dislike mobs. I've never heard of that, but I guess if uh, some somebody pushes somebody the wrong way and then they like the, the viewers can gang up on an up and coming creator and then thus, you know, bury the content because there's so many dislikes on it. And if you see a bunch of dislikes, then maybe you join in and you add more dislikes. Like I actually, I don't think I've ever pushed that button. Like if I don't like it, I just go to the next video. Um, and I, I suggest maybe you do the same, like just leave people alone, but people do it. Um, so if you push uh, the dislike button, like there still will be a thumbs down button on the YouTube videos, but it's not going to be publicly seen. That's just something that you can see in your YouTube studio. It's not available to everyone yet. I looked on my channel. I still have the, the dislike counts. And when I go to other people's videos, I can still see the dislike counts. But just like with everything, it's going to roll out. So give it some time. And, and this is something that I, I really like seeing the platforms doing what they can to just kind of remove the negativity aspect, right? Because there's like already negativity there. But when you can just like go attack somebody's content instead of just moving on, then like people choose to attack instead of just like, oh, this isn't for me. Let me keep keep it moving. They just have to give their opinion. So giving people the option to push a thumbs down button, cool, but not everybody needs to know about it. That's just like instead of using it as a weapon, it's being used more for its intended purpose, which is feedback. So if if everybody can't see your thumbs down, they can't see your dislikes on a video, but you end up getting a lot of dislikes on a video, then it's less likely that they ganged up on you. There's maybe something in it that your audience truly didn't dislike. So use that information to help you create different or better content um, and then and then go from there. So, you know, because not everything is for everybody and that's up to you. So like if you get a lot of dislikes in, you know, like, but I really like that content, right? You as a creator, like you really liked that, then then you liked that. That's just maybe not your people. The next thing to talk about is Twitter blue. Now I am not a Twitter user. I've actually deleted Twitter off my phone because it stressed me out to look at that. Uh, you know, we already have so many different platforms to look at. And there was like something about Twitter that just gave me like that, that thing where I just want to look at things that make me angry. That's what Twitter was. And I was like, oh, I just, you don't need to be here on my phone. And if I need to see something on Twitter, I'll go on my computer. But honestly, since I've deleted it, it hasn't been an option. But there are a ton of people that like Twitter is their is their world that like they hate Instagram and they hate YouTube, but they love Twitter. It's all designed for different people. And as I tell you guys all the time, you do not need to be on every platform every day, all the time. You don't have to do it. Just pick what you like and stick to that. You know, you don't have to do all of them. But Twitter Blue is going to be a new subscription-based access to Twitter. So it's not people subscribing to you on Twitter. It's you paying a subscription for this more, uh, this Twitter with more features. Uh, so it's been launched in the US, Canada, Australia, and New Zealand. And again, because it's something that's new, it's going to be giving you issues, of course, right? So just be aware and, you know, go lightly as you, you go into these things. Um, and then some of the features that uh, people are, you know, asking about, like the big one was an edit button. I know on Twitter, people have been asking forever for an edit button on Twitter. It's not an edit button, but there is an undo tweet button. So an undo tweet is going to give you the option to retract a tweet after you send it, but before it's visible uh, to others on Twitter. So it's not an edit button. So you can't just like go in anytime and edit it. You have a window which I believe is a 30 second, yeah, default of a 30 second tweet undo period. Um, you can shorten or lengthen it to five seconds, 10 seconds, 20 or 60. Uh, so what I believe it does is like you type your tweet. And I think this is to like help people with their rage tweets. Uh, they 
type your tweet, you press send, and I think it ends up in like Twitter limbo for default 30 seconds. Then it, you can you can change it to 5, 10, 20, or 60 seconds. And then from, from there, it's still in limbo. It's not public yet. That's where you can snag it back and make some changes. But after it's public, then it's public. And it's just like old school Twitter. That's it. That's it. That's all there is. So you got to let it go. And I can see the reason why you might want to do a shorter window is if you're if you're live tweeting along with something, you don't necessarily want to be 60 seconds late on that. Um, you know, 30 seconds seems fine, but I, I could see where there might be cases where you might want to shorten it or lengthen it. If I was still a Twitter user, I would default it to 60 seconds. Not that I ever really sent anything, but like for typos or like you forget to tag something. Otherwise, it used to be like you have to try to copy it and then delete it and then post it again. There was no editing the actual posts. But some of the other things it can do, you can get articles ad free. Uh, and then this chart here is, it tells you um, the feature as it is on iOS, the feature as it is on Android, and the feature as it is on desktop browser. So ad free articles, you can bookmark, you have bookmark folders, um, custom app icons, you can do themes, navigation, top articles, reader mode, and the undo tweet. And reader mode was actually something I was interested in. So let's see. Reader mode turns long threads into more beautiful reading experience. We've designed reader to let you enjoy your threads with less noise. Turn on the reader feature when you tap on the reader icon. So I'm guessing if that's like a thread of tweets and you know, sometimes it's like a little scattered. There's a little bit here, a little bit there, a little bit all over the place. This is going to give you the option to make it into a more beautiful thing. And then, so this is a paid feature and it costs, Let's see how much it costs. It's a monthly basis. You can find the pricing when you sign up. So because it's not here right now, I feel like it could be in flux. So I'm not going to look up a price because it might be different for different people. Who knows? But I'm not a Twitter user, so it's not my thing. But if you are a Twitter user, let me know what you think of this, if you're using it, and if it's something that's helpful. Were there features that you were like really excited to get that they did give or like the things that you're disappointed that you're like, where is it? You should have given me, you should have given me my thing. Um, you know, so I hope that Twitter blue makes Twitter a nicer user experience for you. So that is our social media news, our content creator news for today. Of course, there's always tons and tons of things going on. I know that there's some new uh, bonuses for Instagram reels that are coming out. There's a new subscription base and creator funds on Meta, formerly known as Facebook. Uh, so keep an eye out for those kind of things if that is something that you are interested in. All of the platforms are trying to find ways to pay the creators. So it's to your advantage to just keep your eyes peeled for that. And I've actually been getting really into Pinterest. So believe that there's going to be some Pinterest tutorials coming up because they're, I really like, I really like what they're doing over there. I'm really into it. And Next up, we're going to talk about the tools I use to make this live stream. This show is made with a bunch of different programs, but it is just me and the gear and the programs. I don't have a producer. I don't have anybody else that is working on this. It's just me in an office, the cat over there. It's a good time. So if you want to know everything, everything that I'm using, you can go to the website, marylemandel.com slash tools. That's going to give you absolutely everything. And those are affiliate links. Some of them are not affiliate links, but most of them are. That does mean that I get a little bit of a commission if you purchase through that link, but by no means feel like you need to purchase through that link. Just get it wherever the price is best for you. So let's go ahead and took, take a look at some of these tools that we're using. First up, we talk about thematic. Hello, thematic.com. That is where I get all of the music for my content. So the music that you see in the opening and the countdown timer, you see in my intro, my outro, and then when I do an edited video and I put in a song as well, those are all from Thematic. And they recently just put up a lot of new updates and my favorite, I mentioned it earlier, is the weekly updates, the, the weekly songs that are assigned to you. It's like amazing. 
because I don't like to look for music and the fact that they're just like, here's 10, maybe like one of those. And then, you know, of course, like maybe you do, maybe you don't. But like over the past few weeks that this feature has been available, I've picked a song from that every time. I think one time I picked from the trending songs just to like shake it up um, because I want the algorithm within thematic to to give me different songs that are also trending as well. Really great feature to narrow things down if you're like me and you just can't, you just can't think of all the things, but it's royalty free music you can use on Instagram and on YouTube. So definitely check that out. The next um, tool is Restream. Restream is a program that is used for multi-streaming. I use that to send this live stream to YouTube, to Facebook, and then also it is paired to the thematic YouTube channel. So if you're seeing me in one of those places, that is because of Restream. But it is one live stream just being pushed out to a bunch of different places. It's pretty fantastic. A lot of my graphics I make with Canva. I have Canva Pro. I used Canva Free for a really long time. It was great. When I upgraded to Canva Pro, I'm telling you, I have never regretted that. That one's I like y'all can take my money forever because it saves me so much. I just like tools that save me time because I want to get to this part, right? To the creating of the content. So the tools shouldn't be the thing that hold me up. They should be the thing that smooth things out. So Canva Pro is great for thumbnails. You can make an intro sequence. You can make Instagram posts. You can make Pinterest posts. You can make videos. You can make an invite to your holiday party. All of it. You can do all of that. And I use Ecamm Live to produce this whole show. So that's the way that I'm able to make this show look like it's edited and with graphics and flying graphics and change scenes and change cameras and all this stuff is because of Ecamm Live. So it's a Mac only program and it uh, is a game changer. It's really changed my content creation game a thousand percent. Um, and I, I've been using it for just over a year. And if you go back and you look at my videos from like two years ago, I always would shoot them and edit them. And it would take many days to get a video done. Uh, like a tutorial. It'd be so simple and it would take me forever to do because I had to like assemble all the pieces in different ways. Now, if I have a, something comes up and I want to do a tutorial, it will take me the length of telling you how to do the thing. And then that's it, you know, with adding thumbnails, doing your optimization and things like that. And then speaking of optimization, I use TubeBuddy to optimize my YouTube channel. It's excellent, excellent tool. Last week we talked about doing A-B tests and thumbnail tests with TubeBuddy. I use it to uh, explore tags, to see what people are searching, to tag my videos in order to get them in front of the people who need that information. It is a really great tool and there's so much in it that I still haven't uh, figured out how to use because there's so much that you can do with this tool. Really great value for for everything that that can do. It's a good time. So again, if you want to know about any of this stuff, it is uh, marylemandel.com slash tools. We'll give you a link to everything, but also like, please go where the price is best. Um, so, cause I, I just, I want you to win. I want you to be able to get your tools and get your content creation off of the ground. I want, I want us all to win. You know, I want us all to win. And speaking of affiliate links, right? Everything that I just talked about, those are programs that I use and I'm I'm definitely excited about, right? Like 100% those are real programs that I actually use. I am not paid to tell you about them. But if you follow a link that I share, I may or may not get a commission depending on if it has an affiliate program or not. All of those ones on the previous page do have an affiliate program. So today I'm going to talk to you about affiliate programs and affiliate marketing as a content creator because everybody wants to know how they can make money making their content. And I'm going to tell you right now from the beginning, you do not always make money. You do not always make money at the beginning. You have to build a foundation to start making money because like, so say you have a, a restaurant and you're like, well, you should just pay me to like have this restaurant I was like, no, but you don't have anything to offer yet. You don't have dishes. You don't have a menu. You don't have anything. You have to build all of that first. And then, then you have the stuff that people can buy. 
and then you can make some money. So with affiliate programs, there are a bunch of tips that I will offer you. Um, like you should be really talking about the things that you actually care about and you're actually passionate about. Because if you, um, like as I kind of discovered how this works and how it works well for me, I, I've definitely tried affiliate programs that somebody like reached out to me and they're like, oh, you would be a great affiliate for this. And it's not a product that I know. And I'm like, oh, okay, I don't know. Let me try. And I can't talk about it. I can't do it. I have to actually care about it. So the way that I go about it is whatever program that I like or product that I like, I will with that, I have to already have it. And then I search for an affiliate program for it because I'm talking about it anyway. And it really depends on who you are, how you like to sell. And that's where like, I don't really think of it as selling. I'm telling you about it anyway. If you happen to buy it through my link, then that's great. If not, then that's great. As long as you get done what you need to get done, that's all that matters to me. But you might be a different type of affiliate marketer. So keep that in mind as you figure out how you would like to do affiliates if that is indeed something you want to do. So the, the easiest one for you to figure out and get into is the Amazon affiliate program, Amazon influencer program. So I have a link in this, the description to all of these pages on my YouTube page. Um, and then, uh, you know, if you're other places, all you have to do is search the keywords of whatever we're talking about. And, and it's very easy to get to these pages. So Amazon uh, Aff associates, Amazon affiliate, Amazon influencer program, they're all different versions of the same thing, but it's the easiest one to apply to. Not everybody can get into it, but I think that the, the, the threshold to get in is very low. And so you should just apply because if you're buying anything, and that's the thing with Amazon, they have everything. So you don't have to have bought something on Amazon in order to promote it with your Amazon link. And before we get any deeper, I do want to back up and talk to you about disclosures. So with, with Amazon and all affiliate programs, if ever it is an affiliate link, you have to disclose per FTC guidelines. And what does that mean? FTC is the Federal Trade Commission. They make the rules to, to have like fair commerce, right? So you're not tricking anybody into buying something that you will get paid for. Um, because you might be biased, it might not be a legit recommendation. So that's just to to, to protect everybody involved. So disclosing means that you have something that is visible and audible that says this is an affiliate link, you might get commissioned. So this article, again, another one from Shop Style Collective, if you, whether or not you use Shop Style Collective as a program, you should sign up for their mailing list because they have just really great information for making money as an influencer, for affiliate marketing, for planning your content, like really, really great stuff. So there's a lot of requirements um, that are listed, but it is really simple to execute. So there's three key rules that they've got in here. Always include original content in your posts. Original content can be photos taken by you product reviews from you, blog posts you made, recipes, tutorials, and more. You cannot use another source's image to promote your shop style collective affiliate link. So that's specifically for them. And it's like um, a clothing affiliate uh, aggregator without explicit permission from the person and the photographer. So original content, it has to be your content. So you cannot just pull the product video from an Amazon page and then post that onto your um, Instagram. And then now that's your post to say, like, go buy this thing, unless you have a relationship and that's already been established that they're like, here's some assets that you can use in order to promote this product. You want to show yourself and, and tell a story. So include your personal perspective, stories, anecdotes, and so on. The more relatable, the better. Yes. You want to give your experience with the product. So that's why like, if we go back to the, the product page, where I told you all the different programs that I use. I'm sharing with you my real story and my real experience with these programs and how I utilize them in my workflow. That's, those are my opinions. Those are how I use it. And it's how I actually want to come off. Like 
with the truth, right? And so if there is an issue with anything, I will tell you. And that's why a lot of the times I'll try to include a con. Um, but for the most part, I just don't talk about it. If I don't like it, I just don't include it. So you know that like if I'm talking about it, it's because I actually like it and I think it will be useful for you. And then the last uh, rule that they suggest here is to avoid coupon and promotion stacking. It can result in non-commissionable orders and exclusions from programs. So with this program, they sometimes have coupons or promotions. So like Black Friday is coming up. It may be a Black Friday sale. It's probably not to your benefit to do a Black Friday sale plus give your coupon code, if that makes sense. I would assume a lot of retailers, like it's not even going to allow you to do both, um, but that might result in like maybe there's going to be a glitch and then you're not going to get that commission so if it's a, a sale or a promotion then just don't talk about your coupon codes if it's a regular season then talk about your coupon codes so but just be clear about what it is so you know original content is like you know tutorials right so i do tutorials all the time those are my original content this is how i use this product right um there's images of you using the product and then your stories of how that product made your life better. Disclosures are so important, right? So it must be next to the content which it relates to. The viewer should not need to scroll to view the disclosure. And I will say that I did not actually uh, know that until I read this article because usually my disclosures are at like the bottom of the blog post or the bottom of the email or the bottom of my YouTube description. So now what I'm doing is putting it at the top or right before the links start, if that makes sense. So in my YouTube description, I've got links of references for this episode. Then after that, I say there are affiliate links here and then underneath it are all my affiliate links. So, you know, just so you know that they are there. If you go to marylamandel.com slash tools at the top of the page, I say this page includes affiliate links that I might get commissions for. Thank you for shopping, right? Just, it's a good way to support your content creators that you, you know, that you enjoy, that you get value out of. And most people are not going to be like, ew, this is an affiliate link. I'm not going to do it. But if you tricked them into it, that might turn them off. So that's not what you want to do. The disclosure must be in a font of the same size as the rest of your post. So it cannot be like teeny, teeny, tiny. It has to be the same. Um, it must be obvious and not buried in a long paragraph of unrelated text or hashtags. So you can't do like hashtags and then disclosure and then hashtags where like nobody's going to look at it. Um, and they must be visible on every place the post appears, not just by clicking a hyperlink such as your bio or about me page. So that's why in this video, I'm telling you it's a disclosure um, that these are affiliate links. I have it in the description that there are affiliate links. And if you go to my tools page, it says that those are affiliate links. Just let people know. Don't keep it a secret. Let people know. And always disclose if a brand sent you a product for free. That's very important. So I've been doing on Amazon, Amazon live episodes. Some of the products I have have been gifted to me over the years, but I actually really like them. And I really use them. So if it's anything that's gifted to me and I don't like it, I just won't talk about it. I just won't talk about it. But I will always say like, oh my gosh, uh, Zeal Sound gave me this microphone arm. Thank you so much, Zeal Sound, for giving me this microphone arm, but they're not paying me to tell you this. I actually really like it. It's not that hard. And it helps your audience trust you even more because they know that you are on the, you're on the up and up. So that link is in the description of my YouTube video. So I hope that you do look through that if you are going to do any affiliate marketing. We got Ashby, awesome Ashby is in here. Love all of this info so much. I am so glad that it is helpful for you. So we're going to go back into looking at the Amazon affiliate program because there's like a lot to kind of look at in there. And again, if you have any questions, feel free to let me know, to let me know. So Amazon Associates, Amazon Affiliate, Amazon Influencer Program. They're all like kind of the same and kind of different and I can't get a clear answer on what's what, but this is the place you sign up for them. And you can go through it and like just apply to it. If you get denied to this, I'm going to give you some other places you can look for affiliate programs and you just want to continue building your following. When you do get it, 
this is what you get. You get an Amazon storefront. So let's see what others see. This is the public view of it. And my page is actually broken. So I can't like edit this. I've tried to contact them and I can't get a hold of anybody who can fix this for me. But that's fine because that's how these platforms are. They're all doing the best that they can. We are there for free, putting up stuff for free. So we just do the best we can with with what we have available to us. But your, your Amazon storefront, right? You should be able to edit your banner and your page, your uh, profile picture. You can upload pictures. So much like um, an Instagram feed, right? You can upload a, a shoppable photo and then people will see this and then you can click on the products that are in that photo. You can also do the product videos, which I feel are really where the party's at and I will show you why. You can do idea lists, uh, which are just like lists of things that you use um, and then like to categorize them. So I know if somebody comes here, they wanna see gear for content creators, that's great. If they want cat stuff, that's great. If, uh, you know, they just want to know what we've been buying lately, then kitchen stuff, right? All of that, they can go to that. And then at the bottom, you've got your live stream. So these are past live streams. Uh, this is uh, from last week. And then if you go to click on past live streams, you can see all of them here. And a lot of people don't even realize that you can, that Amazon Live exists, that you can watch Amazon Live and that you can, you can be, you can make Amazon Lives. And it's a mess. I tell you, it's a mess. The programs are a mess, but it is worthwhile if you've got if you got the stomach to try to figure it out. And with the like, my favorite favorite piece of all of these are the product videos. So if we go here to the videos, so now this is where I can manage my videos. You can upload. You know, most of these were videos I made already years ago. And I just had to go out and, and cut out anything that like sends somebody to subscribe or follow or comment or says anything about other social media. So there are rules um, that you can look at as far as like best practices for doing an Amazon video. But this is like really, really great. So this is my commissions for the past 30 days. And I haven't uploaded any new videos in the past 30 days, but like $46 to just like show up, like that's pretty rad. But a couple of months ago, I had like three videos up and I made $150. So it's worthwhile to give it a try if you have access to this. Uh, but do make sure you look at the best practices. And that's a whole other tutorial that we can go through as well. You will have your Amazon associates where you can report where you get the reports of your earnings. Everything is mixed into this. So you can't really see like what's a live stream, what's a video, what was from a link. But over the year, you know, uh, Will and I like have done this project together. We've made $1,500 so far this year. And you can see beginning of the year, we didn't even really start it, but April is when we started to do the live stream. June, we went really hard. We fell off a little bit and now we're back. So you can see like clearly the trend of, you know, you put in some work, you get some return. So we've got a few different ways that you can have content on your Amazon page, but this is also where you can share links to your other social media. So once you have your um, associates, influencer thing, um, connected. That's why, like, if you go to my tools page and you click on any of the product products that are not like the programs, it's probably going to bring you to an Amazon page. So let's, here, we'll go to this one. And okay. So say you saw me like on my Instagram stories, I'm getting ready and I've got this hairdryer, right? I love this hairdryer, but I want to make sure I say, I share a link to that up here in the top. You can click on text and then you can copy that and then you can paste that into your link sticker that we all have access to now. Uh, so that's how you can get that on the desktop. And then I will show you how you can get to it on the phone. We're going to go back to here. Double shot. This from a dry bar. And I love, I tell you, I love that hairdryer. 
like is crazy. Why, why do I love it so much? I don't know. It's just great. Okay. So get into focus here, get a little bit closer. Okay. So you'll go to the product that you want. And then there's this button that's right here. You're going to click on that. It's like a share button and you can share your associates link. It gives you your store ID and then it's going to give you a link that is attached to that account or you can share a non-associates link. So remember, if it's non-associates, right, you're not getting commission, but you don't have to disclose it. If it is an associates link, then you're going to want to disclose. So that's where you'll see that, like, I'll put a little notice in the post that says this is an affiliate link, just so you know, but I like the product. So get on it, you know, get on it. And there's a lot of places that you can do affiliates. Um, so it's not just Amazon. Amazon's just a easy entry point and it's easy to understand because there's everything in the world on, on the Amazon store and you can get a link to anything. So no matter what you're talking about, you can find stuff to talk about on Amazon. But um, you might want to consider other places depending on you know, maybe you hate Amazon. Maybe you don't shop on Amazon. Maybe you know your viewers don't shop on Amazon. Or maybe you just want to be able to give people options, which is really good. So I've been starting to use this program called uh, Genius Link or it's a service. I'm not exactly sure. Um, but it's a thing that helps you create links um, that are always updating because say a product is sold out, then that link is dead, but Genius Link should update it on its own. And they have these things called choice pages and it's really cool because it'll give you the option to link all of these other stores and you may or may not, like I don't have a B&H affiliate program. Like I, I was denied it multiple times. I don't know why, but I include it in case somebody really wants to buy it from there because right. Cause what I care is that people get the thing that they need or that they want in order to, to do what they need to do. So on this page, right, I have an Amazon affiliate. I have Adorama affiliate. Um, I don't have B&H, Best Buy, or Canon, but I will include it because if they have a better deal, I want you to go where there's a better deal. And you can do that with all of the products that you have. So that is a tool um, that I'm starting to use and I think is a really good option. So you'll, you'll start to see that more often. And it's to give people options on where to purchase because they might not, they might not lock the store that you have it linked to. Um, impact.com is a, like a, a database, a platform, a management platform, but there's a lot of different programs on there. So if you sign up for impact, then you can apply to actually other affiliate programs and the same with partner stack. So those are two that I actually use a lot, um, for a few different, uh, different programs. I think Canva is on partner stack, um, and I think Restream is on impact. So it just depends. And then a lot of programs just have it on their, their actual page. So if there is a program that you really like, then you just type in Google thematic affiliate program. It's going to come up and it might be on their page. So they might not be using a management tool. Maybe they're just doing it directly in house. So keep an eye on that. So like Ecamm has one, uh, you can be an Ecamm affiliate right? And then you fill it out and then you just give it some time. And then if you're approved, you're approved. And then you can start making money off of promoting the things that you actually already love anyway. So that is affiliate program. So if you have any questions, let me know. Next week is going to be the season finale of Club Content Creator. We will have eight episodes, which is very exciting. That's two months of this show that, you know, I dreamed up because I wanted to be able to do a longer form show where we could talk about things a little bit more in depth because a lot of the other content that I make is like short and quick and like one thing only. I wanted to be able to have some discussions with y'all here. So I hope that you enjoyed it. And next week, we're going to talk about seasons, how you can create content in seasons and how you can start planning for 2022, because I wouldn't start a season of something in December. Uh, December is also Vlogmas. So I'm going to explain to you a little bit about what Vlogmas is and if uh, that's something you want to participate in. Uh, before we go, I do have one Q&A topic that um, came up and it is about 
pre-uploading um, a carousel to Instagram. So you can, there's a lot of programs where you can just upload a picture or a video and it, it can schedule it to post later. But this one is so you can, you know, you can do a carousel, which is a pretty, pretty big deal. I just discovered this myself. So this is in Creator Studio, Facebook Creator Studio. So yeah, Facebook and Instagram are both in Facebook Creator Studio. It's crazy in here. I don't love it, but you can do some things in here that you can't do on the phone. Once you're in Creator Studio, you're going to log in and you got to make sure your Instagram account is connected to your Facebook account. And on the top here, like this is, this confused me. I didn't realize this was uh, here. So you got the Facebook button on the top and you got the Instagram button on the top. So you want to go to the Instagram button. You're going to go to create post Instagram feed or IGTV. Currently you cannot schedule your reels, but just consider reels like a completely different app. So your Instagram feed, you write your caption, right? Tag your location, your hashtags, all of that. And then you're going to add your content. You're going to file upload and you can actually upload more than one picture. And now that's a carousel. Okay. So once you fill everything out, when you're ready, you're going to go to this little arrow in the corner and you're going to go to schedule. And then you pick, you pick when you want to schedule it. You can go pretty far out just like a couple months, right? So till the end of January, so it's like two months, two months out. So you can actually get a lot of stuff done and ready to go before, you know, before the time comes. So you can save yourself a little bit of time and spend less time on social media and more time creating your content. Yeah, okay, comment here. Ashby said, uh, 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 uh. let's see. MPB is a cool camera site that you like too. Oh yes, yes, that one's good. It's different from sponsors and sponsorships. Yes, so affiliates are different than sponsorships. So a sponsorship is like a partnership, a contract that you are entering in with whatever brand that they pay you to either create content for your channel, create content for their channel. Those are sponsorships, branded content in that way. So that's different than an affiliate is you on your own channel, on your own, of your own free will, you are saying, I like this thing, here's a place to buy it. And if you buy it from there, I might get a commission. So that's how they're different. They can work together. And if you uh, end up getting a branded sponsorship, a partnership, and you're posting that content, you should also just make sure it's in your contract that you can include your affiliate links. That way you get double duty, you get paid for the project. Then you also, if people like, if the project is good, if the video is good, the content is good, people are looking at it and they're like, yes, it converts. People want to click on it and they buy it. It's still your affiliate link. So that's just something you want to make sure when you get into um, those kind of relationships with brands to just make sure that that's, that's cool with them. Most of them, they want that because it's a way to track if sales are coming from your content. So it's a good thing. It's a good thing. Next week, like I said, we're going to have our season finale. So have your party hat on and I look forward to seeing y'all then. And remember, if you want to be a content creator, you can totally be a content creator. All I ask is that you create, release, and repeat. Go drink some water, be good humans, and I will see you next time.